Are you an electric guitarist who'd like to learn some new ideas that will stretch your ability and open up your creativity? Do you have some knowledge gaps that you'd like to fill in? Or maybe even you're an acoustic guitarist wanting to transfer to electric. Introducing the Intermediate Electric Worship Guitar Course from Music Academy. This huge 10 hour, 4 volume instructional DVD set is designed to give you all the essential tools to play any modern worship electric guitar part and even to create new parts yourself. Everything you learn is split up into bite sized lessons where each technique is broken down into easy to understand segments and played slowly so you don't miss a note. So it sounds like this. So let me break that down for you. Then out worked into well-known worship songs so you can learn some great new parts. Two, three, lick. Finally, we show you how to place those ideas into other songs in different keys so they become part of your personal technique and lick library. We start off really simply with your main role in worship learning to play great rhythm parts that add colour and texture. So notice that the rhythms actually stay um, exactly the same between these two chords and it's really important as a textural guitar part uh, that you keep the rhythms very, very similar so it gives a sense of kind of clarity and consistency rather than just randomness. Then build up your knowledge so you can apply it to real songs. And we even give you backing tracks with on-screen chord charts for you to practice along with. Here we go on the A. E. D. A. F sharp. C. We've included so much content that it adds up to at least a year's worth of worship-focused electric guitar lessons. Here's what you'll learn. Over 90 usable electric guitar voiced chord shapes all over the neck. And I've made sure that that's dampened and that's dampened. Five, six, seven, eight, or one. So it's an A, as you'd know, but barred across so you keep that open A free. Loads of licks, tricks, and cheats pro guitarists use for playing up and down the neck in the keys of G, D, C, E, and A. Four, four. C. And then seven, which is your D over F sharp, is the same as your five already. So actually three shapes can give you everything you need to play in the key of G. So that gives you all seven chords, not only in the key of C, but anywhere you choose to put it. So if we're in C sharp, it's the same thing. Make it more minor. Four, five, six, seven, one. To a D. F sharp. How to play any chord in any key anywhere on the neck using the caged system. F on a D shape, here we go. F on a C shape. from an A shape, let's go up again a shape, so A, and then an E, F sharp minor, D, let's go up again, so A, E, C shape, F sharp minor, and then D. Okay, let's move it up one more time, so A on the C shape, so A, E, F sharp minor, D. Use sixths and tenths to create new voices. Chord two, fret 12 together. Back to chord one. So it's G sharp, A, B, C sharp. Use thirds and fourths for creating harmony. Try again, so it's 
two, seven. One, two. Open, seven. Learn how to combine all your chord knowledge for easy positional playing. If you remember those chords that I showed you in the key, so one, two, three, and then we've got four, and then five, six, seven, and then one. We'll also explore lead guitar with five pentatonic scale positions. So it's five, seven, five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, four, seven five. Shape two, A, string five. Shape three, same place to start. Here we go. Shape three up high. Shape four low down on the A. Cover every note the seven major scale positions. The next two strings, it's the same thing. So five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine. So it's root, tone, tone. Enhance that knowledge by picking out tunes and then you run down the shape. And then do exactly the same as what you did in shape one. Use drone notes, power chords and octaves for adding colour. So I'm only actually playing, that's dampened, that's played, that's dampened, that's played. Use volume swells, finger picking and effects for adding texture. And bring it off again, C sharp minor. We'll also explore soloing ideas in major and minor keys, string bending, hammer-ons, pull-offs, tremolo picking and lots more. So I'm just literally playing the fret 9 and then hammering on to the 11, so it's... So, so that in rhythm is... So I think of it as actually 11 notes, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then it's one and put it together in a really great solo you can learn note for note then learn some tasty hendrix style double stops for combining lead and rhythm sounds brilliant for playing in worship and a d on a c shape And up here, we'll even show you things that other courses don't cover, like approaching hymns as an electric guitar player. 4-1. Four, 4-5. Four, six, four, two, five, one. Using drop D tuning in worship. Then when you come to the G, you need to change again. So you actually play G like this. Really nice chord there. And invaluable chord substitutions. The key to great electric guitar voices. Oh God, you reign forever. And then why not do another substitution on the end? So we're going to go, our hope, our strong dear, live. And instead of going back to the five, why not substitute for the seven? Plus loads of tips on amps. And in actual fact, to get your amp sounding really great like it's intended to, you need to be running it at volume probably six or seven to get that kind of sweet spot which is way too loud for most churches. So what I tend to do these days is use a very small single channel tube amp. Choosing the right guitar for a worship band. And then finally, we have something like this, the Dan Electro. Now these are actually really cheap guitars, um, but I think they're a really sort of underrated instrument for people involved in worship teams. Pickups, tones and volumes. So a lot of um, guitar volume controls are quite primitive. And what that means really is if you knock it back a little bit, it also knocks off some of those treble frequencies. Using pedals in worship, including delay, overdrives, compression, volume swells and wah. If you change around this order, what will happen is that if you had the, the volume pedal before the drives, it would act actually like a, a volume on your guitar. So you'd actually change the sound from clean to dirty rather than just 
the overall volume itself. So for volume swells, put it after your overdrive pedals. Now I've also added some compression to it as well. So it just brightens up the sound a little bit. So now depending on where you put your boost depends on what function it performs. And an entire section on leading worship on electric guitar. Um, however, if you're strumming on an electric guitar, because it's got more sustain, you actually just need to play it less, you need to strum it less, and you actually just need to strum the main elements of the groove, and then be confident that the rest of the band can take the rhythm. Now I'm not strumming any harder, I'm just gripping it harder. So think about those kind of micro skills of just how hard you grip the pick, and it makes a tremendous amount of difference. So you will learn some great licks. But Intermediate Electric is really about giving you all the tools you need so you can get the sounds in your head and the parts you'd love to play onto the fretboard. Use these kind of top sounding shapes for, um, you know, like the last chorus where you want a big lift and a bit of a dynamic change. So for a year's worth of worship focused electric guitar lessons, get the Intermediate Electric Worship Guitar DVDs from musicacademy.com.